Hey, what's up guys? This one is for my old heads, dudes that are in their 30s that are frustrated with modern day hip hop. I'm gonna be just like you one day. My kids are gonna show me some Russian polka music where the guy singing has a donut head. They all got breast implants and I'm gonna be like, man, this new music sucks. Back in my day, we had Fly Soldier. But today we're talking about Toker from Brownside. Brownside is one of the first Chicano hip hop groups, if not the first ever to get a mainstream co-sign. And the person who signed them was none other than Easy e Now Easy e is a smart dude. He knew that sooner or later, this type of rap would catch on. Easy e also signed a group called HWA, Hoes with Attitude, which is probably the precursor to City Girls. Now Toker was born in Chicago to a poor Catholic family. He grew up in South Central Los Angeles on the east side, and he never really stayed in one place. His family once moved 20 times in one year because his dad would get kicked out for not paying rent. And Toker attended Ascot Avenue Elementary School, and then 20th Street Elementary, George Washington Carver Middle School, Jefferson High School, and Metropolitan Continuation School. So he was never outside of South Central Los Angeles. And from an early age, he started gangbanging as a Sereno and spent a lot of time at East Lake Juvenile Hall. Fresh out of Juvenile Hall, he'd go back to live with his parents and his dad would come home with a busted eye from a pool hall incident. Toker found the guy who did it, slammed a door on his arm, a car door, broke a few beer bottles over his eyes, and he pistol whipped the guy's friend. His criminal activity didn't stop as a teenager. He continued gangbanging into his 20s, having several stints in jail, and started a rap group called Brownside with Danger, Fellow, and Wicked, and then later on, Clever would join. Unfortunately, one of the members, Fellow, who was also Toker's brother, ended up dying before they recorded their first tape, which included the song, Gang Related. This tape would get the attention of music attorney Bob Lieberman, who showed the tape to Easy e Now Easy e was looking for a Mexican version of N.W.A., and this is exactly what he was looking for. They would get signed to Ruthless Records, and Easy developed a close relationship to Toker. Toker would let Easy e know that if he wanted to get rid of someone, then Toker could send someone to take care of it. What's cracking with this death row ruthless shit? Who you want gone? Cause we ain't fucking around. Nah, nah, Toks, it ain't even like that. I said, it is like that. Who you want gone? You tell us who the fuck you want gone so you can make a statement. Don't worry about it. Yo, Lil Sharp, how old are you? 16? Yo, Lil Crook, how old are you? Like 15? All right, don't worry about it, E. I'm gonna send my little young juvenile torpedo so they can go ahead and do work YA life. <laughs> Now being affiliated with Easy e Toker would inherit his beef with Death Row Records, which Toker didn't mind. And as you might know, during the 90s, Death Row, which was Tupac and Suge Knight's label, and Ruthless Records, which was Easy e and Bone Thugs Harmony label, these two record labels had a feud. So Toker and Easy e would one day go to a cheesecake factory with about 30 dudes. I wonder who picked up the tab. Anyway, six members of Death Row were following Easy e recognizing his car, and they stormed the Cheesecake Factory and surrounded him. Toker and the 30 gentlemen would physically throw the six Death Row members outside the restaurant, and they never came back. Car, and there was like seven, eight motherfuckers that claimed Death Row waiting for their cars to pull up because they were leaving the Cheesecake Factory. Right when my boy E walked past them, they all surrounded him. What's up, And They were saying the N-word on him. What's up, motherfucker? Yeah, fool, this is that, that roll, whoa, whoa, whoa. And my boy looked, and my boy knew it was like 20 <laughs> motherfuckers coming in. He knew it was like 20 motherfucking gangbang, ball head gangbanging south side motherfuckers coming in that had his back to the fucking fullest. So they surrounded my boy talking shit. And all of a sudden, them seven, eight motherfuckers looked around like, <laughs> we're surrounded. They thought they were at a Mexican soccer field. In the year 1995, Toker would go to a nightclub and notice a crowd of people staring at one person. That person ended up being Tupac. Toker and his friend would confront Tupac, yelling in his face, threatening to fight. And that's when Tupac would just get up and walk away. Everybody looking towards this, this one spot where there's this one dude sitting down with this badass little bitch. 
And he had just he just he had just went to death row. Mm -hmm. He was just fucking with death row. That was that move. So uh, so we were in line, and everybody's looking that way. And I'm like, what the fuck is all these motherfuckers looking at, man? Let's get this line cracking, man. Let's get this line moving. And then one of my homies says, nah, that's the looking at that motherfucker Tupac over there. I says, Tupac, Tupac who? That fool over there. I says, oh, that motherfucker? That motherfucker who's claiming the West Coast now? Man, homie, you ain't shit. And everybody was like, damn, no. Hey, Tupac. And there they was at one essay talking, talking shit. Right. So I'm like, man, homie, fuck that fool. That man, fuck you, homie. In that same year, Toker would do a little stint in jail. Supposedly, he was being tried for murder, but he was able to beat the case. And then later on, Easy e would die, and Brownside would leave Ruthless Records. And then unfortunately, in 1997, Danger, a member from Brownside, ended up dying in a drive-by shooting. Toker would write a tribute song for him. Now Brownside would keep releasing albums through the 2000s and as Toker got older he started his own record label and got familiar with social media. He had something called The Toker Show where he would just talk for hours, like three hours straight telling stories about him and Easy e He obviously kept recording music, making videos, and over time his channel reached 100,000 subs. Brownside ended up making the news in 2015 because Toker's brother Clever was flashing a loaded revolver behind a cop car. Toker would speak on this incident saying it was a mistake because, you know, the bond was over $200,000. Back to his YouTube channel. He was never afraid to talk shit about other rappers including Mr. Capone E, 6 9 and SPM. <sighs> I don't fuck with SPM. I already told you fools what I think about SPM. Homie, fuck SPM. I ain't down with no snitch. I ain't down with no child molester, homie. Anybody wants to take this shit to the heart, take it to the heart, homie. I'm a South Sider. But hey, he'd also say a lot of positive things about up and comers like Sad Boy Loco and even hung out with them. It was at this point in his life where he seemed content, like he made enough money, he was married, he had a kid, but everything would change when he bought a house in Tijuana. Now there was a lot of videos of him in Tijuana and it seemed more of like a vacation house than a residence house. Toker started filming music videos and throwing events in TJ and this caught the attention of the Tijuana cartel. They started to keep an eye on him because he had money and he was cocky. Toker was a fearless person though and the rumor is someone from Toker's East Side 13 gang joined the cartel and set him up to get robbed. The person who allegedly set up Toker was Chico from Get Money Society who now goes by Capo GMS. He knew the area Toker lived. The cartel members would allegedly try to kidnap Toker. Some say they were dressed as policemen to put his guard down. They spotted Toker at a Cali Max, which is a grocery store in Mexico. And no one knows for sure how the altercation played out. But one thing is certain, on October 9th, 2018, Toker and one other person were found dead in the Cali Max parking lot. The perpetrators left in a black Ford Explorer and they haven't been found to this day. It's rumored he had some sort of involvement, though there isn't much evidence that the killing was gang related, it could have just been an attempted robbery gone wrong. Clever from Brownside said, It's hard to accept my big bro Tox is gone, but like he said, you live by the gun, you die by the gun. I'm not gonna sit here and try to paint him as a saint. My bro was a gangster and done did a lot of crazy shit. To all you little fans out there sending us DMs, looking up to us, saying they want to be G's like us, sit back and learn from us. Look at how tomorrow is not promised to us. You want to be a G, beware of what that life is going to bring you. Even though Toker passed away, his family still runs the Brownside YouTube channel. Personally, I think this dude was really funny. I would have loved to see him on No Jumper or Vlad TV. And I guess he had a book that was supposed to come out, but it never did. Anyway, rest in peace. Let me know what you think of this dude. And if you want to know about some more old school artists like this. Anyway, I'm out.